here are seven extinct animals that scientists are ready to bring back, starting with an animal that could be brought back in our lifetime. Tasmanian Tiger The Tasmanian Tiger, or the thylacine as it's scientifically known, is hands down the coolest extinct creature ever. Seriously, it should be on everyone's list of favorites. And let me tell you why. This animal was a marsupial version of a wolf mixed with a bit of tiger and kangaroo. Around 4,000 years ago, these incredible Tassie tigers roamed from Papua New Guinea all the way down to Tasmania. But then, along came the dingoes, those wild dogs from mainland Australia. They were fierce competitors, outcompeting the thylacines and pushing them out of their habitats, likely all the way back to Papua New Guinea. However, Tasmania was a safe haven. The dingoes never made it there, so the thylacines thrived much longer in Tasmania than anywhere else. Up until the early 20th century, Tasmania was still thylacine territory. The last one known to be alive in captivity was a guy named Benjamin, living his life in the Hobart Zoo until 1936. There's also some actual footage of him. But sadly, outside of captivity, the last known thylacine met its end in 1930 at the hands of a man named Wilfred Batty. And this is where the tale takes a tragic turn. Human ignorance played a big role in the thylacine's extinction. People believed these amazing creatures were a threat to their sheep, so they put a bounty on their heads. But the truth is, these tigers weren't some sort of sheep-eating monsters. Yes, they might have occasionally nabbed a sheep, but it's not like they were out to destroy entire farms. Now, even though they're officially declared extinct, there are still whispers, tales, and even some hardcore believers who think the Tasmanian tiger might still be out there, lurking in the wild. We're one of those people. Not in Tasmania or Australia, but up in the remote wilds of Western Papua and Papua New Guinea. But realistically, the chances of stumbling upon one are pretty slim. These are vast and remote areas we're talking about. However, there's this incredible project underway called Colossal, and they're doing something truly groundbreaking. They're working on bringing back the Tasmanian tiger. Now, you must be wondering how on earth does that work, right? Well, they're using DNA samples from Tasmanian tigers preserved in museums around the world, and they're mixing it with genetic material of its closest living relative, the numbat. Now, the numbat is tiny compared to the Tasmanian tiger, but with some genetic magic and a lot of fancy tech, Colossal believes they can bring the Tasmanian tiger back to life. And why is this so important? Because Tasmania's ecosystem is kind of messed up without its top predator, the Tasmanian tiger. Without them around, there's chaos. You've got diseases running rampant among the Tasmanian devils, and other critters like wombats and quolls are struggling too. With the Tassie tiger gone, there's no one keeping the balance in check. So, if Colossal succeeds, and let's be optimistic here because they're onto something big, they'll work with environmental agencies to reintroduce Tasmanian tigers back into their native habitat. So, this isn't just about resurrecting a cool creature, it's more about restoring an entire ecosystem. And let us tell you, the thought of seeing a Tasmanian tiger, whether it's through our own eyes or through the success of Colossal, is mind-blowing. On a scale from 1 to 10, we give it a solid 9 in terms of likelihood. Yeah, we might just witness one of the greatest comebacks in conservation history in our lifetime. But this isn't the only extinct animal that's coming back in our years. A giant, fluffy, arctic elephant is also on its way, the woolly mammoth. These magnificent creatures were like prehistoric elephants. They roamed the Earth during the Pleistocene Epoch, which was roughly from about 700,000 to 4,000 years ago. That's not too long ago, especially when you think about it in the context of human history. Now, these mammoths weren't just confined to distant history books. They were actually right here in California, specifically on the Channel Islands near Santa Barbara. On these islands, there was something called insular dwarfism going on. Basically, because of limited resources on the islands, these mammoths downsized in order to adapt. But why do we care to invest millions of dollars to try and bring them back? Well, the woolly mammoths played a crucial role in keeping our planets cooler. In a world that's heating up faster than ever, having mammoths around meant they helped maintain lower temperatures. But we'll come to that in a minute. First, you have to know that these magnificent creatures were quite similar in size to modern elephants. They stood at about 9 to 11 feet at the shoulder. But what really set them apart are those impressive tusks, which could grow up to a staggering 16 feet in length. 
that's two times as long as a Christmas tree, and it's a whole different level compared to their modern counterparts. They're big, hairy, with massive foot pads, and all perfectly designed to tackle the harsh, cold environments they called home. Speaking of home, woolly mammoths weren't picky about where they lived, covering vast territories from Northern Asia to Europe and even North America. And what's even more fascinating is how adaptable they were. From grasslands to tundras and even islands, they made themselves right at home wherever they went. Just like modern elephants, woolly mammoths were social animals, living in close-knit family groups. And when it came to their diet, they were herbivores, munching on grasses and other vegetation like champs. Scientists have discovered woolly mammoth remains preserved in permafrost, and it's official. The woolly mammoth is set to make a comeback from extinction, and it's happening sooner than you might think. According to Colossal, the biotech company leading the charge on this ambitious project, we could see the majestic creature roaming the Earth again by 2027. You see, these mammoths could actually play a vital role in saving our planet. When these mammals roamed the Arctic, they played the role of Mother Nature's gardeners. They'd knock down trees and pack snow with their stomping, transforming the landscape into a giant savanna. This is actually what helped keep the planet cooler. It maintained a snowy layer that insulated the ground, preventing the release of carbon from decomposing vegetation. But with the mammoths gone, the Arctic has warmed up and the permafrost is melting at an alarming rate, releasing tons of carbon into the atmosphere. So, bringing woolly mammoths back into the picture could be a game changer. But fear not, cause Colossal is on a mission to resurrect the woolly mammoth within the next decade using a combination of Indian elephant DNA, which is nearly identical to that of mammoths, and the wealth of mammoth DNA we've gathered over the years. With these animals coming back to life, we could see the Arctic transform back into its former, cooler self which would mitigate the effects of climate change. The dodo. Now for the dodo, a majestic giant bird that has captured the imaginations of people all over the world. And that is, despite the fact that none of us alive today have ever laid eyes on one. It's a strange concept to wrap your head around, but that's because these incredible creatures were wiped out from existence back in the 17th century. And the way it happened is truly heartbreaking. Old British sailors landed on the shores of Mauritius, which was home to these big, lumbering birds, about three feet tall. They had no fear of humans, which sadly led them to being labeled as dumb. They were cruelly exterminated for sport. These sailors would be wielding sticks, and they bashed these unsuspecting birds on the head to kill them. It's a tragedy of epic proportions, really. To think that such an iconic and amazing creature was wiped off the face of the earth due to human ignorance and cruelty. But now, there's hope on the horizon. And once again, we owe it all to colossal biosciences. Yep, you're going to be hearing a lot about them. They're doing some mind-blowing work, including the resurrection of the dodo. In fact, they're working to bring back this iconic bird in our lifetime. The process involves some pretty advanced stuff called PGCs, or primordial germ cells. They're going to take the PGCs from the Nicobar pigeon, the closest living relative of the dodo, and tweak them genetically to resemble those of the dodo. Then, they'll mix in some dodo samples, put it all together in a chicken egg, and voila, a dodo is born. Colossal is also working closely with the Mauritian government to reintroduce the dodo into the wild in the coming years. And now for an ancient cousin of our plain old zebras, the quagga. The quagga, which is often confused as a unique subspecies of the plain zebra, once inhabited the southern regions of Africa, and what really set it apart was its distinctive appearance. While it boasted the characteristic stripes on its head and front half, its rear was adorned with a solid brown coloration. Sadly, human activity led to its demise in the wild, with the last known specimen perishing in 1883 at the Amsterdam Zoo. However, efforts are underway to right this wrong through the Quagga Project. As early as the 1950s, there were discussions about the possibility of reviving the Quagga through selective breeding. The project gained momentum in the 1980s when mitochondrial DNA research confirmed that the Quagga was indeed a subspecies of the plain zebra. This revelation provided a significant boost to the project's credibility and fueled hopes of bringing the quagga back from extinction. In 1987, something important happened for the quagga project. Nine zebras were picked and taken to a special farm near Robertson, South Africa. This was the beginning of the plan to bring back the quagga. Later on, more zebras with similar looks were found and added to the project. But as their numbers grew, 
they needed more space, so the project expanded to other places where they could be looked after. Actually, the quagga is a separate species and was not closely related to any of the three extant zebra species at all. It was instead the most basal of all the recent zebra species. The quagga lacks similarities to extant zebra species. Brown zebras evolved before black and white zebras, not the other way around. Since then, many baby zebras have been born, and as they grew up, some started to look a lot like quaggas. Right now, there are six zebras that are very close to being quaggas again. They're called Rao quaggas. Their names are Henry, Freddy, DJ14, Nina J, FD15, and Kumba. They're the ones leading the way for the quagga project. Next up is an incredible European goat, Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex was a remarkable large goat that inhabited the mountain range spanning Spain and France, known as the Pyrenean Mountains. What makes it particularly interesting is that some reports suggest a small group of Pyrenean Ibexes still roam the mountains, hopping from ledge to ledge with crazy agility. This possibility isn't as far-fetched as it may seem, given the Ibex's natural prowess in mountainous terrain. With their exceptional climbing abilities, they can navigate steep slopes and cliffs that would challenge even the most experienced climbers. So, it's conceivable that a small group could evade detection for long periods. Despite being part of a populated region like Europe, the Pyrenean Ibex managed to remain hidden, at least for a while. Conservation efforts were initiated in the latter part of the 20th century due to the dwindling population. However, despite these efforts, the numbers continue to decline. Tragically, in 2000, the last known Pyrenean Ibex, a female named Celia, passed away, marking the species' extinction. It's pretty sad to think that this loss occurred just 23 years ago. The extinction of the Pyrenean Ibex can be attributed to several factors. Historically, the species faced intense hunting pressure, both for its meat and as a trophy animal, due to its remarkable horns and distinctive appearance. Human greed played a significant role in driving the species to extinction. Despite efforts to conserve the Pyrenean Ibex, hunting continued, fueled by the desire for trophies. Moreover, human-introduced diseases likely transmitted from domestic livestock further contributed to the decline of the Pyrenean Ibex population. Conservation efforts, including attempts to halt hunting, were initiated to save the species. However, respiratory infections and parasites devastated the remaining population. In 2003, there was a cloning attempt using preserved tissue from the last known Pyrenean Ibex, Celia. Unfortunately, the cloned Ibex, also named Celia, was born with lung abnormalities and died shortly after birth, marking the cloning experiment as unsuccessful. Despite this setback, advancements in genetic technology offer hope for the potential revival of the species. While the Pyrenean Ibex remains extinct, advancements in cloning technology and our understanding of closely related species provide lots of optimism for its potential return. Now for a bird that had a population density so great that it used to black out the sun, the passenger pigeon. The passenger pigeon, or just passenger for short, was an amazing bird that used to dominate the skies of North America. It had this cool blue-gray coat with hints of pinkish-orange underneath and shiny feathers on its neck. There used to be millions of them soaring together in massive flocks that were so big, they could literally blot out the sun. But despite being so abundant, they were wiped out in a shockingly short span of time, all because of us humans. It's mind-blowing to think that something with millions, maybe even billions of members, could vanish so quickly because of human activity. These birds used to be everywhere in North America. While some reports say there were millions, Others suggest there could have been billions of them flying around. Just like its name suggests, the passenger pigeon was super migratory. Every season, these birds would take off on lengthy journeys, traveling long distances to find food and nesting spots. They'd gather in huge colonies that stretched across vast areas. Now, here's why losing them was such a big deal. These pigeons were like the gardeners of our forests. Their diet was mostly fruits, nuts, and seeds all things with seeds in them. When they'd come to feast in these massive groups, they'd chow down on these goodies and then fly off again. But the important part is that they'd leave behind those seed-filled droppings that were ready to grow into new plants. But when they disappeared, it was a disaster for our forests. Without them spreading seeds around, ecosystems were thrown out of whack and forests suffered big time. 
During nesting season, they'd form colossal colonies with single trees often hosting thousands of nests. Despite their abundance, passenger pigeons faced a rapid decline in the late 19th century. The reasons behind their extinction were many. Intense hunting, driven by the belief that their vast numbers made them invincible, took a heavy toll. Their habitat also suffered from destruction, and human activities disrupted their natural migration patterns. Despite being prolific breeders and nesting in huge numbers, passenger pigeons couldn't withstand the onslaught of human pressure. Their social nature, which once offered protection in large flocks, became their downfall, as dwindling numbers made them easy targets for hunters. The last confirmed passenger pigeon, a female named Martha, died in captivity at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. It marked the tragic end of a species once so abundant that it shaped the ecology of North American forests. Efforts to bring the passenger pigeon back to life have faced significant challenges. One initiative, the Revive and Restore Project, aimed to use selective breeding and genetic engineering to bring back this iconic bird. The idea was to identify bird species with genetic similarities, selectively breed them to enhance passenger pigeon traits, and then genetically engineer them to resemble the extinct species. However, progress on this front has been limited, and the project hasn't garnered much attention lately. The main hurdle lies in the scale of the endeavor. Bringing back just a few passenger pigeons wouldn't be enough. To ensure their survival and genetic diversity, thousands would need to be cloned simultaneously. Finally, Here's a type of chicken that could also make a comeback, heath hen. The heath hen, scientifically known as Timepanucus cupido cupido. It was a ground-dwelling bird, celebrated for its unique booming calls, particularly during the breeding season. Being historically abundant, this bird inhabited the heathlands and grassy lands along the Atlantic coast. They were primarily found in the states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island, where they played a vital ecological role. However, the heath hen story took a tragic turn with the expansion of settlers into the eastern United States. As settlers cleared extensive areas for agriculture, urban development, and other human activities, the heath hen's once thriving habitat began to shrink rapidly. Loss of habitat, coupled with hunting pressure, significantly contributed to the decline of the heath hen population. By the early 20th century, the heath hen's numbers had dwindled to alarmingly low levels. Conservation efforts were initiated, including the establishment of protected areas and hunting regulations. But these measures were insufficient to stop the species' decline. Despite sporadic sightings and limited conservation attempts, the last heath hen, a male named Booming Ben, succumbed to natural causes on Martha's Vineyard in 1932, marking the extinction of this once iconic bird. In recent years, discussions about reviving extinct species have gained a lot of momentum. This has been fueled by advancements in genetic engineering and conservation science. Scientists intrigued by the possibility of bringing back lost species turned their attention to the heath hen. Building on research conducted with the passenger pigeon, scientists are exploring the feasibility of using gene editing techniques to resurrect the heath hen. One approach involves examining the genetic material of heath hens and identifying closely related species that could serve as surrogates for genetic engineering experiments. The greater prairie chicken is a potential candidate due to its genetic closeness to the heath hen. Researchers are hoping to leverage the genetic similarities between these species to recreate the heath hen's genetic blueprint. However, the complexities of bird reproduction pose significant challenges to the resurrection efforts. Unlike mammals, birds lay eggs, making traditional reproductive techniques like in vitro fertilization impractical. While researchers have made some moves in cultivating reproductive cells in controlled laboratory settings, adapting these techniques to wild bird species has proven to be difficult. But despite these obstacles, scientists remain optimistic about the prospects of restoring the heath hen. Compared to other extinct species such as the passenger pigeon, the heath hen's genetic similarity to its living relatives offers a good chance for successful restoration efforts. And with continued advancements in gene editing technology, along with a deeper understanding of avian reproductive biology, the dream of witnessing the return of the heath hen may one day become a reality. In the end, the journey to bring these seven extinct species back to life represents a remarkable fusion of science technology, and conservation efforts. From the majestic Tasmanian tiger to the iconic dodo and the resilient heath hen, 
each species carries with it a story of loss and hope. Through innovative projects like Colossal Biosciences' efforts to bring back the Tasmanian tiger and the Quagga Project's strides towards resurrecting the quagga, we are witnessing the dawn of a new era in conservation biology. Although challenges remain, including ethical considerations and the complexities of genetic engineering, the prospect of seeing these once extinct creatures roam the earth again is pretty exciting. So, which extinct animal would you like to see brought back to life during your lifetime? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.